Hey everyone, welcome to another video and thank you for tuning in. I am so excited today. I finally got the hand show uh, automatic front op front opener and so let's uh, let's see what it's got and start the install process. Like I said, I am so happy that I finally got this thing because I use the front all the time. All right, as you can see, all the parts here, the brackets, the uh, wiring harnesses. So far, it looks like everything is here, two shots, and of course, all the instructions for it. So, this is probably gonna take a while, so. All right, let's get started. And then it all went bad for me. Where do I begin? First, let me start by saying that this is not an install video. This is basically me um, wanting to get a product, share my experience with you guys as far as the product itself and the ease of installation. So that being said, this is what I've learned and this is what I would recommend. Okay, let's get the big stuff out of the way really quick. First, the hand show frunk is working perfectly. The automatic opener and closer is working perfectly. It does what it should and it works as advertised. I can use my phone as well as the touch screen inside the car. So it does work. It took a lot of time for me to do it, but it does work as advertised. Um, it took me between five to six hours to install this. And that is an awful lot of time. And here's something that I discovered after the fact. First is the kit that I got is different than the kit you may get. I don't know if I got an old kit or if I have no clue. And I don't know if that made it more difficult or not. I'm just saying that I got a different kit than what you may get and here's how it's different. Okay, the difference is, first, is the kit you get and the kit I've seen uh, watching videos after the uh, I did my install is now Hansho has a replacement part that looks just like this. Essentially, it's black in color, but it has the attachment point and it's uh, just all one piece. So you just basically screw this right into the fender, fender wall inside. And then that clips on here. The kit that I got does not have that. I got a bracket which has just this top portion attached to the bracket. And then I needed a separate bolt to put in through a hole and attach that bracket to the fender wall. That was a difficult bracket to put on because you were working blind. So that did make it a little more difficult. Again, it changes the positioning of this ball because I think it's a little lower than what if you just actually got this piece, which is the factory piece. And again, some kits come with this where mine came with a bracket. I don't know. Again, I don't know if that makes a difference, but there you have it. The other thing that um, I ended up having to do is this ring clip right here. You see it's popped out and what it does is it holds the ball in when it's closed down. I had to physically remove this entire ring clip from the strut. Don't do that. That is bad because you could lose this ring clip, which I did, and take an hour finding it, which I did. So it wastes a lot of time. And again, it's something that I hope you don't have to do. Um, and if you start to go down that road, I would just say, stop, don't do it. Uh, but I could not get this sh strut on to the passenger side, their strut onto the passenger side. So again, so I noticed that there was a difference in the product. I don't know if mine was old or new. I, I can't say that enough, but there, there are a couple versions. So you should be aware of that. 
my other recommendation um, or that you should do is get another person to help you. I can't stress that enough. Dealing with the hood when you're taking off the shock or struts, shocks, whichever you want to call them, um, it, it's just tedious. You know, for the first half of your installation, you really want to have somebody else there with you to help you out with that stuff because it's just going to make your life easier. The other portion, and again, I don't know if this is because I've got a different kit or slightly modified version or older version, is that the directions that I got with the kit were very confusing. Um, it it was in broken English and some of the pictures were very hard to see. It was difficult to kind of tell what they were wanting you to do. Now, if you ever built IKEA stuff, it's similar to that. You have to really study the diagram and the pictures because every little detail could make a difference. So look for the details. Then maybe if you just slow down and really study everything, it'll probably save you some time in the end. But it was, to me, not a smooth and easy to follow kind of directions. Uh, it was a little intimidating, I have to tell you. You know, if you're not mechanically inclined, um, this might not be the project for you. Again, I found it very difficult. Uh, you're always working blind when you're working with the struts. Because your arm's in the, uh, in the compartment, but you physically can't see in there. So you're doing everything by feel, it seems like, which is always a pain. So there's that portion of it. And then just dealing with all these, uh, the wiring harness and the plugs, and then plugging them into different places, it, it just gets frustrating. I set my alarm off twice doing it and it scared me to death. Uh, I, I thought for sure I was gonna smoke something or the battery was, I don't know. But again, if you're patient and you have some familiarity with uh, mechanical things, I, I think you'd be fine. But if you're not, I, I would recommend that uh, you take it somewhere and have it installed because again, it took me almost or somewhere near six hours and uh, a gazillion panic attacks and it, it was just a hot mess. I even lost the tool in the fender well and you can see that at the end of the video. I looked for it at night, couldn't find it. I actually removed the uh, fender well uh, inner lining and I found it in there. So you can look at the very end, you'll see me picking uh, my tool out of there. So, but again, Product works as it should. Right now, I've opened and closed it uh, a gazillion times. It seems to be fine. But the install is, for me, it was tedious. Big thing is you could get a different version than what you see on YouTube. Now, I did this without watching any other video so that I could run into the pitfalls for you. If the frunk opener starts having issues, I'll be sure to let you guys know right away. So, with that being said, on with the rest of the video. Okay, so now that uh, we know we have all the parts, let's start dismantling the frunk. I think all we need to start off with is this pry tool to try to get this up off of here. Let's see if it's gonna come off. Yep, just pops right off. Plastic pry tool really helps. Now it looks like uh, we've got some screws, two screws in the front, and also a couple screws uh, down inside the bottom of the tub here. All right, I got uh, all four of those bolts out. Let's see if this just pops out. Actually, you got a little tab one of those plastic uh, tabs right there. You can just push it out from the uh, whoop, push it out from the uh, other side. So that's what it looks like right there. That was holding this on, and I think that's it. So let's see if we can lift this all out at once. Okay, so that comes out, but you have a light attached to the bottom here. I'll show you. Yeah, so this little piece right here needs to pop out as well. So, let's go ahead and take care of that. 
Again, use your pry tool. I think that this is all it's going to take. I'm not sure. Seems like it's attached at the bottom and the top. So. So yeah, there's three little uh, clips on top that just pop in, and then you have this little uh, plug that you need to remove. All right, uh, I'm having a little difficulty getting this plug off of this light in here. So what I'm going to do for now is just tuck it in there and uh, lift the tub out and work on it after that. So, all right, get all the tools out. Let's see if we can get this thing out of here. All right, no problem. Set this over here. All right. Okay, and now we have access to the bottom of the frunk. I'll show you what it looks like here. It's just crazy to think that this is all just covered up by plastic. All this componentry. All right, guys. Well, let's see what we need to do now. All right, this uh, little plug in here was very difficult to get out. There's a little tab on it that I actually had to use the tip of a pick tool to press down right on the uh, center of it. And then it loosens it up so that you can pull it out. But it, it was probably one of the tighter uh, plugs in there and so if you're struggling with that when you do this, uh, know that that's just normal. Like I said, you got to press down. There's a little square right on top. And like I said, I'll show you guys that right now. See if I can show you here. It is right there, right at the tip. So there's a little indentation. And then you need to press down on that because there's a little notch right there at the top. You, you probably can't see it, but it's right at the right at the tip there. Let's see if I can focus that in for you guys. But anyway, you got to press down on it with a little pick tool and then uh, pull on it and it'll pop right off. But it does take some force, so know that uh, it, you, it kind of feels like it might break, but yeah, if you press down on it, like I said, loosen it up, pull it right out. All right, well, I'll grab my glasses because it's kind of hard to see in there. And uh, I can tell you that removing the strut so far is the hardest part. You really need a nice little uh, pick hook like this. And it is a tight fit in there and it is very difficult to get to. Um, just the limited uh, working space. And I'll show you guys what I mean. Okay, so this is connected right in there to that ball, right in there, yep. So this was, uh, you can barely see it, I'll try to get it in the light. So, yep, it was hooked up, and then you can see that little ring on the left side that was just a pain to get to. You really need that pick tool to just be able to slide it in at the very top of the ball. You know, to the far left side. Jam it in there and pull out. You know, if you twist left or right, it'll pull right off, but it's the, uh, the access point. That's tough. And then, of course, now at the very bottom there, there's a nut that needs to be uh, unscrewed. So, we can go ahead and take care of that now. Also, you can see, as soon as uh, I removed that one strut, the, uh, uh, the hood started really just starting to close, it started closing real slow. So you're gonna need something to prop it up or a friend to hold it up while you're doing it. So that's, uh, just know that, I mean, it won't drop. Once you uh, remove that, you'll see it, it'll start slowly closing because the other side doesn't have enough strength to hold the entire uh, hood up. Again, that nut down there looks like it's a half inch. I brought a crescent as well as a half inch just to see. This is it. It does seem like that's it. Alright. Again, it 
it's uh, because it's such a tight little um, area, you gain access to it. But it's not in there too tight, so. All right. A couple turns and it seems like it could uh, be loosened by hand. Again, for those of you who are a little taller, this might be actually pretty easy, but I'm having to really reach over. And obviously I have a towel down to try to protect the pain. If you have a uh, fender mat, that would be great as well. All right, well, that is one strut down. Oh, and here's what it looks like. Stabilis lift a mat. Alright. So here's what you're uh, removing. And here's the part that is so difficult to get to. Basically, you have to have the pick tool right in here and then just twist it. So essentially Feed it in at the very top and then try to pry it out and you'll see that it, it kind of just does its thing where it pops out like that. And then when you have it popped out, it'll just pop right off of uh, the connection there where it's bolted on or uh, popped on. Okay, well, let's do the other side. All right, I just popped that side off. Um, now I got to get to the bottom uh, nut again so let's go ahead and do that and again um, when I popped it off I lifted up on the hood a little bit to kind of release some pressure that helped a little bit and then yeah just push it out and it pops right off hmm. so that was uh, a little intimidating and a little tough to get to so be patient with that it's just gonna take a little time and it is a little frustrating so just kind of working blind down there. Yeah, it's coming. Second one out. Okay, now that we have the struts off, we have to attach these two brackets. It's marked uh, left and right, and the orientation's kind of weird, so be careful with that. Um, I'm taking it as the left is the uh, driver's side and the right is the passenger side. And how they would go is essentially like this. And this is kind of important right here. So, and again, the attachment point for the strut is actually uh, on the uh, bracket itself. So we have to put these two uh, pieces in place and then we can attach the struts. So again, uh, right and a left. And again, left, uh, pretty sure that that's the uh, driver's side and the right is for the passenger side. And again, the space is so tight that uh, this is kind of a pain to get to, but slow and steady. All right, let's do it. Okay, well, I've got it started and it is a little tricky to get in there but i don't know if i can get the light on there for you you can see it's got that little portion dun, dun, dun. let me see if it's uh lighting it up there you go you can see the bracket how it's uh braced up against the front and the back i guess for extra support and that's what that bracket's for but it was a little kind of uh tricky to get it on there you have to kind of work blind because of the limited space so just know that that you know you you, you have to put the screw through the bracket put it down there and then start slowly uh trying to find uh the thread start threading it in all right, I All just right. want to show you guys, uh, you saw that the, I got the bracket started and the screw that they use to um, attach the bracket to the wall there is going to be uh, 
a basically a flathead with a with an allen so you're gonna need an allen wrench and I think this one is a four millimeter looks to be yeah four millimeter allen wrench so um, and they say be careful when you are putting this in there because you could damage the bracket so I, I, I don't know what that means now I will say that when I was removing the old one it wasn't in there all that tight so maybe uh, they just mean don't crank it down too hard and maybe that's why they even did this Allen situation here where you don't really get a lot of grip on it or I should say you can't put a lot at, at some point so I'll tighten them down and get the other one started all right that one is uh, tightened down now I I did it snug. I didn't crank on them to get them as tight as I could get them in there. I don't know if that's going to be an issue later. I hope not. Um, but it says be careful of uh, damaging the bracket when you're actually installing the uh, screw. So, all right, let's see what's next. All right, let's install these uh, struts. Now, I don't believe that there's a left or right to this. There is a lot of grease on uh, both of the uh, connection points on each of the uh, struts here, so that's good. That'll help uh, for them to snap on. And I don't think you have to release anything. I think you can just uh, push these on. So, now again, there's grease all over them, so be careful when you're handling it. So, all right. Also, um, I guess you're going to have to just kind of twist this around because both of the connection points are facing one way and obviously that's not how they're connected. Um, that's not how you're going to connect them. This one is going to face inside, this one will face out kind of deal. So just kind of twist it around so that you can get it to where you need. Alright guys, well everyone it's been an hour and a half and I could not get that strut on for the life of me. So much to the point where I removed the spring clip on the top portion so that it would make it easier to go on. And when I did that, it uh, misshaped that spring and it actually popped off. I lost the spring some, uh, in the compartment. I dropped a tool inside the fender well, which is still in there, that I'm just going to have to get out at some point. And um, yeah, this has been just very very difficult so now that being said um, <laughs> I ended up finding that spring clip reshaping it putting that on without the spring clip in it and then once I got the, uh, the, the strut onto the ball I actually tamped the uh, spring clip back in through the from the top I hope it holds but I just the driver side went on so smoothly, the passenger side just would not go on for the life of me. So, at any rate, they, it was very, very unnerving, very just frustrating. But again, an hour and a half of trying to get that on there. So, but again, that's my luck. So hopefully that's not what you guys run into. All right, well, it's black on black, so I just got a white marker here. And of course, my marker is uh, acting funny, of course. So this is, uh, again, this is typical of my luck, guys. So hopefully uh, you don't have this many problems, but all right. I'll show you what I did here. You can see here, I just put uh, some lines in, marking the spot. So, all right, now we can unbolt this. I may just, it says to remove the whole assembly, but I may not do that. I may just leave it uh, connected and just try to take the spring off and see how that goes. says remove it from the top side up here so let's see if I can get this yeah 
Get it down. Okay, well, it pops off. All right, we have the spring here now. I'll set that here. And now we are supposed to put this essentially You want to try to uh, match them up and hook this into the spring there. I wonder if there's a right or a wrong way to do this. Doesn't look like one side's favoring the other, so. I'll just try to do this. Alright. Okay. So that is on there. Now that it's hooked. Okay, now we got to put the spring back on. it actually by hand without any tools so I don't know if that was supposed to happen or not so that's kind of sketchy and I think that's it and we will mount this back up to where it should be all right all right got it mounted back up now I've got to run this through the front bumper for the emergency uh, full just in case there's no power. I've already uh, popped the front out. This is what it looks like. Uh, it popped out really easy. You just push on the top and then snap it out from the bottom. And yeah, it, it'll come right out, no problem. So, all right. Okay, I'll fish this through. And then that way this can be here. This will be down here somewhere. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna dip into this whole uh, heap of a wiring harness mess here. Okay, it is nighttime now, and I gotta tell you, I have uh, had a terrible time with this. I've plugged everything in. The bag does not seem to fit as well as I hoped because it's not really covering all the stuff, so. I'm going to put another bag over it as well, try to secure it because um, 
I'm just a little nervous about it. I've set off the alarm twice. Uh, I keep plugging in this and it, the alarm keeps going off, this one right here. All right, well, this has been quite an experience. I think everything is plugged in. I just hooked up the power. And I gotta tell you, I am scared. I am absolutely terrified, so. All right, the power is, I just haven't plugged it into the module. This is the end of it right here, and I gotta plug it into the module. And I think when you do that, you can actually uh, set the door in motion. So, I'm going to see if that happens now. This is absolutely terrifying, so. Let me put you right here. I am scared to death. All right, module, plugging in. Woo, that was scary. Thought for sure it was gonna come down on me. All right, well, if I'm correct, everything's hooked up and we should be blinking red down there got a green light and a blinking so hooked up the motor cable now positioning of this thing this cord from the uh, passenger side uh, strut is not very long in my application so I don't know what the deal with that is I don't know if this was an old model that they sent out because I'm gonna tell you the instructions were horrible Oh, so, all right, everything is in place. There's room here, but again, I don't know where I'm going to mount that thing, you know, so this, I'm just going to have to get creative with this. All right, well, now I guess uh, we'll see if this thing actually works. All right, after a whole day, and uh, numerous panic attacks. This is what we got. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Not bad. Holy cow, this was a difficult install for me. I don't know how you guys would do, but this was not that easy, honestly. And the instructions, those things right there, not very helpful. Wow. All right. Let's see uh, how we can clean the uh, all the lines up now. All right, if you guys are wondering why I'm crawling on the ground, I don't know if you remember, but I told you that I had lost a tool in the wheel well. So like I said, this has been just fantastic today. Oh, hey guys, well, it's the next day and uh, I don't know if you remember te me telling you, I lost a uh, tool in this thing while I was uh, doing the front, so. I've already popped off the two clips to the fender well. And now uh going to try to take a look, see if I can't recover that tool because I don't want it rattling around in there for my uh, 1,300 mile, 1,500 mile trip. All right. Just pulling the fender liner out. Holy cow. I need to bring you guys in. 
Oh, let me see if I can bring you in here. Oh, it's sitting right there. Oh, let me uh, see if I can bring this out. This is crazy. There's a kick tool. I hope I can get it. <laughs> All right, recovered. Thank you. Oh, now if I can only just get this back into place. Oh, please. Oh. Oh. Get the tool here. Well, that concludes everything that went wrong with that install. So again, part of it, my fault. Part of it, I just don't know how uh, things went. So anyway, we are done. And we are successful in getting everything cleared up. Again, guys. Thank you for uh, watching the video and I appreciate your patience. And I, I gotta tell you, that was definitely one for the uh, record books and uh, difficulty. Uh, but it's been quite the journey. Anyway, uh, remember, go to your car meets, have fun with your mods and enjoy what you have guys. Thank you, we'll see you on the next video. Take care.